Uh, the other thing I'm greatly concerned about is I told you there's all this great legal precedent, and it's true. It's, it's great stuff. But what if we lose one of these cases? It seems far-fetched. Precedent is terrifically on our side. But on the other hand, uh, until this last election, which took a real load off my shoulders, maybe off yours too, um, you know, we could see the Supreme Court going some particular strange way, couldn't we? Where we couldn't be so sure that if a case defending science went before the Supreme Court, that they would judge the right way. We already know that there are creationists on the Supreme Court. Scalia is a creationist, plain and simple. How many more of those can we tolerate on the Supreme Court? And what would we do if we lost one of those court cases? I mean, I was thrilled when the Dover case was won. It was great news. That you, sh you should read the trial transcripts. It's, it's, it's like a novel. It's so exciting. Uh, well, sort of. Um, <laughs> but you know, you, you kind of you got to keep in mind, what if we lost one? What if we lost that trial? What would, he, what would we do? We are cheered at the precedent that we've been building up, but all it takes is a few reversals. And that pre precedent goes away. And suddenly, creationists have a case to breach the walls of the classroom. So it's something to think about. What are we going to do? Another problem that I see right now, uh, I, I hate to blame this one guy, but I call it the Ken Miller effect. Uh, Ken Miller is a great guy. Maybe you've, maybe you've heard some of his lectures. Maybe you've read his books. He's good. He's on the side of science, OK? And I'm all in favor of Ken Miller getting out to every community, although he's got a, a real job to do, getting out to every community and lecturing to them about this stuff. Uh, I, I would like to see more of Ken Miller out there. Unfortunately, what we do is we promote Ken Miller because Ken Miller also happens to be a Catholic. And it's part of the story. Religion and science are compatible. And so the NCSE, I think, is particularly guilty of this. They promote Ken Miller a great deal because they can point to him and say, look, He's a Catholic, and he believes in evolution. Therefore, religion and science are compatible. And I feel like saying, well, I'm, I'm going to bring up uh, the bind, torture, kill killer, that serial killer who happened to be a Lutheran deacon, and I'm going to say, look, it's proof. Religion and serial murder are compatible. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, OK? People are really good at, at encompassing conflicting beliefs. And so I respect Ken Miller, but he's not, making, he's not making a case that they are making. He's not evidence that evolution and religion are compatible. We keep acting like it is. At the same time, what it does is it promotes religious people over atheists. Uh, if, you know, if, you, if you look at the uh, AAAS and you ask, OK, what do people believe there? You know, the top ranked science, scientists in the country. No, I'm not one of them, but oh well. Anyway, you look at those, and 97% of them are atheists. If we were tapping into the atheist community and asking them to do lectures like Ken Miller, many of them are just as able, just as smart, just as capable. We'd have many more people working for us. But we can't do that because then everybody gets the idea, oh, well, science, it's, it's purely atheistic. And that's something that we don't want to do. Well, I think we should do that. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with Ken Miller giving a talk. Nothing wrong with, uh, oh, for instance, Jerry Coyne, who's an atheist, a very smart guy giving a talk too, and promoting the same ideas. But we avoid that. And that tends to reinforce the idea that good scientists swallow foolish stories like transubstantiation. Uh, we don't. OK, and this is, this is the big one, is simply focusing on the classroom, saying we've got to protect the classroom. We've got to keep religion out of the classroom. Yet at the same time, ignoring <coughs> everything that's going on around us. Ignoring may be too strong a word, but, but saying that that this is not in our purview to look at politics, to look at religion in the wider culture. We are just going to focus on, on the classroom means you're overlooking a big problem. And so I think we need to do more. We need to get out more. So what are we going to do about religion? And I, I have a simple answer, and that's to fight back. That, that this is the job of the atheists in the community, that what they have to do is point and laugh they have to get out there and make the point that many of these ideas that are being promoted do not belong in the classroom. They do not belong in government. They do not belong on the school board. They're OK to have at home, OK? We're not, we're not going to destroy religion. We're not going to outlaw it. We're not going to say people are bad for believing in religion. 
We're just going to say that it's got a place, and that place isn't in making rational decisions. That's never been religion's strength. And there are places like the science classroom, like the government, where we desperately need rational decision, decisions being made in order to make the right decision. Now, I, I say this all the time. I say, yeah, be ornery, be mean, be cranky. And everyone says, yeah, I read your blog. I know you are. Uh, <laughs> and I'm saying, everyone else, you need to do this. And then I always get these people who are saying, but, but this, will, this will hurt their feelings. And then they won't, they won't do what we like. And they'll fight us back. And this, this is just a little cartoon that I, I like to show to say, to counter that. Uh, so, you know, here's, here's the atheist over there on the right just quietly avoiding the religious ceremony that somebody wants to start a meeting to, and he's accused of being militant. This happens all the time. Now, you know, look at me. Everybody says I look like a teddy bear. It, it, it hurts, really, but okay. <laughs> they say I look like a teddy bear. I'm soft-spoken in, in most circumstances. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly friendly. I never bite. And I'm accused of being this outrageous militant atheist. What have I advocated that is so awful? I have advocated more free speech. I have advocated that we need to dismiss certain ideas as bad. I've argued these kinds of things. Uh, yet still, no matter what you do, you're going to get tarred with the brush of being this evil, violent, militant atheist, no matter how mild you are. So you might as well be hanged for a sheep as a lamb, is what I say. Yeah, go ahead. Get out there and get a little bit more rambunctious. It's a good thing. And it will help the cause. We will advance uh, atheism. We will downplay religion. We might get around some of these bigger problems that, we're, that I've just described. 